Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are back for episode number four plus four, eight. Episode number eight. And it is the penultimate episode before our first major pay per view event, which is Double or Nothing. Um, but before we get into any kind of wrestling, we've had a little bit of drama, guys. Um, I'm going to start with the most boring um, and we'll build our way up. So let's just jump to mail and go down here. Um, actually, this is the most boring. Uh, Luther has announced that he's going to be retiring from active competition in three months. I feel like every week we have a different old guy telling us he's going to retire. So um, I think Jay White and Juice are actually doing work that we're not seeing. Because um, who is it so far? We've got Billy Gunn, Christopher Daniels is leaving us, Jeff Jarrett's retiring, uh, Sarah Stock, Luther, I swear there was another one. Either way, that's five people over the age of 40 that are choosing to leave slash retire since Jay White has announced that Bullet Club Gold want to get rid of the old. So, I don't know, that's uh, a little bit fishy in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, Luther's retiring isn't the end of the world. If I'm being honest, I was going to let him go soon anyway. So, yeah. And then the next most interesting thing is Taz is building a little click. Uh, so it seems to be click building, having forged an alliance between Powerhouse Hobbs and Hook. Now, that sounds like a pretty interesting team. So I'm going to watch this space and see if we can do anything with that. Uh, going forward because Hobbs and Hook on oh no, a power hook there we go writes itself um, that could be something that's quite interesting but that is not as interesting as uh, these emails that I received this morning uh, in our TEW save um, let's see what caused all this hatred yep you're reading that right Andrade El Idolo has cheated on Charlotte Flair Ric Flair's daughter um, and therefore they have divorced and what makes it even worse is he cheated on Charlotte with Dasha Gonzalez uh, Who is one of our hold on we can't view Dasha. Let's go here uh, Dasha Gonzalez who is one of our interviewers backstage ladies we yet to use her because Renee is Renee um, but yeah this fine-looking woman I guess the Gonzalez isn't it, you know Andrade missed home a little bit <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, cheating on Charlotte Flair is a bit bizarre, isn't it? And because of this, uh, Charlotte and Dasha now hate each other. Uh, Ric Flair now hates Andrade. Uh, Ric Flair now hates Dasha. Yuha Nation, which is Apollo Crews, now hates Andrade. He also hates Dasha. And AJ Styles, for some reason, I guess he's really good friends with Charlotte, um, now hates Andrade and hates Dasha. Uh, so yeah, thankfully, all the people hating on Andrade and Dasha aren't part of our company but that also means that most of these people won't be joining our company i guess whilst andrade and dasha stay here and to be honest i think out of all of these the only one that i would have really gone for would be aj styles um but we probably couldn't prize them away anyway but yeah a little bit of drama to start the show let's just clear this out i am going to keep the taz email just to remind me um that's all the drama out of the way. Uh, let's head to the locker room to see if there is any more drama in our backstage incidents. Oh, and look, Taz and Powerhouse Hobbs. Taz is passing on tips of psychology to Hobbs. Great, can you pass them on to Hook, please? Uh, Brian Danielson is also passing on psychology to Jade Cargill. And finally, Claudio incident says that he thinks Action Andretti has a bright future and is willing to put him over in order to help take him to the next level. Now that could be a fun little match, uh, something that we can back pocket for the future. So that's all the backstage incidents. Uh, AEW Dynamite is booked and ready to go. We are returning to the Southwest region and the Walter Pyramid Arena. So let's not waste any more time and head straight into AEW Dynamite. And here we are with the first pre-show, first of three pre-show matches. Um, and thought we'd get some women tag action, you know, start playing around with some tag teams, see who works well together, see who doesn't. And it's our first appearance of Anna J as Anna J. Um, last time we saw her, she was kicked out of the JAS and lost her name, Anna JAS. 
So uh, it's nice to see her back, still smiling, mainly because it's the only picture that I like of her. Um, and in a terrible pre-show match, Alison Kay and Madison Rain defeat Anna Jay and Red Velvet in 11 minutes when Alison Kay makes Anna Jay submit. Oh, poor Anna Jay. Just, just can't get a win with or without the JAS, I guess. Um, looking at the performances, uh, Alison Kay... Uh, Madison Rain and Anna Jay all had the best. Red Velvet's just behind them. And a 43 rated match. Not terrible. Not the best. It's a pre-show. Who cares? Our next pre-show match is Swerve Strickland versus Commander. And it seems like Commander is hated on Rampage. Um, but, you know, not really hated that much here. A 63 rated match. Uh, Swerve Strickland defeats Commander in 11 minutes with the Swerve Stomp. Swerve getting a 64 and Commander getting a 52. Nice. And our final pre-show match is a tag team. Um, again, just throwing some people together, seeing what happens. Um, and we've seen here, Darius Martin and Matt Seidel have excellent chemistry together. That's why you do these random things, because now that could be a possible team. They're both super high flyers. Kind of seems like a match made in heaven. So let's just see how the match actually went down. So we've got Darius Martin and Matt Seidel defeating AR Fox and Bandido in 11 minutes again. Look at these 11 minute matches. When Darius Martin made Bandido tap. 66 rated match, pretty good. Bandido carried the match, of course he did, with a 72. My dude. Uh, AR Fox with a 61 and then Seidel and Martin in the mid to late 50s. Uh, be good to keep a note of this little duo. They kind of look good together as well, so... Watch this space while his brother's out for, what, 10, 11 months now? We could uh, get some TV time with Matt Seidel. But that is the end of the pre-show. Uh, let's go straight into the main show where I believe Tony Khan opens with an announcement. And he does. Uh, Tony Khan announces that this Sunday at Double or Nothing, the Casino Battle Royale will return. And the winner, as always... Well, not as always, because sometimes there's prize money. But as this time, the winner will receive a world title opportunity in the future. Doesn't mean straight away. They can't cash it in like a money in the bank. They have to announce it, and then the match will be planned. So the winner of that match, which will happen either in the pre-show or will open double or nothing, depending on how much time we've got left, uh, will receive a world title opportunity against whoever's the world title at that time and that is valid until the uh, season finale which is all out so I believe that is September I might be wrong um, I think it's September September October time so plenty of time to cash it in um, but I mean if I had a world title opportunity I wouldn't wait um, yeah 43 a segment um, not much happened here so let's move on into the main show and our first match of the night. Oh, also, um, this is a slightly special Dynamite in the sense that um, we have the confirmed trios world title match between House of Black and the Temporary Elite. Um, all members are in action tonight in one-on-one -on -one matches against their opponents. So we'll get three singles matches plus a few other things. Um, but our main event tonight is Kenny Omega versus Malachi Black. Moving on. Our first match of the night is one of those matches. Uh, Adam Page versus Brody King. Zero notes in this match. Very straightforward. Uh, Adam Page defeats Brody King in 14 minutes 27 with the Dead Eye. 67 rated match. Pretty good. Adam Page with a 74 and Brody King with a 52. So that is, I'd say, 1 0 to the temporary elite. Moving on, we have a tag team match. Between the cheating Andrade El Idolo and Roosh, his brother, I think, um, against the Iron Savages. And in just over or well, just under 12 minutes, Andrade pins Boulder with the Hammerlock DDT in a 61 rated match. Both Roosh and Andrade getting 67 performances. And weirdly, Bronson and Boulder got 47. I mean, that's a tag team, you know, the same amount of effort and performance. Uh, excellent chemistry between Boulder and Bronson. And this match got the crowd hotter, mostly because they probably heard the news about Andrade and they're throwing shit at him or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we now uh, head backstage where Renee is talking to MJF. Mwah! MJF is back, everyone. 
Um, and he just recalls the events of Battle of the Belts where he last defended his AEW World title. And he says that although he technically lost that match, he stayed as champion. Um, and the only thing that's going to be different this Sunday is that he's not going to lose the match. He's going to win the match very convincingly. And the belt is going to stay with him because he is the best wrestler in the world, according to him. Um, and if I'm being honest, I think he's probably one of the best talkers in the world. Uh, but we know that already. 97 rate segment. Perfect. The heat is being gained. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to that main event. Uh, MJF, Darby Allen 2. Moving on, we have the second round of our House of Black versus Temporary Elite, where Ricky Starks faces Buddy Matthews. And in 8 minutes 43, Buddy Matthews gets the win with Murphy's Law. I'm pretty sure it's not called Murphy's Law anymore because that's not his name. Let's call it Matthews Law, but that doesn't make sense. So let's just call it a move. Um, Ricky Starks gets a 54, Buddy Matthews gets a 60, and the segment rating gets a 63 overall. So averaging around the mid-60s individually. So let's hope the trios match gets a little bit better than that. Um, but now it is 1-1 between House of Black and Temporary Elite. Moving on, we have a backstage segment where Strong and Cole were kind of just minding their own business making their way to the canteen or something and they get jumped by the Blackpool Combat Club. Uh, they all take turns beating them down, throwing them against the walls, you know, hitting them with a chair, let's say. Um, and we just hear mostly Brian and Moxley just saying, where's your reinforcements? Where are they? Huh? Huh? Where are they? Do you even have any? Huh? Uh, just kind of mocking them, you know, the four on two teaming up. Um, we are led to believe that Cole and Strong do have reinforcements or at least you know two people that are going to come out and help them out but i guess they're making us wait until the uh, night of the event themselves uh, moxie's performance was good of course it was he loves beating people up uh roderick strong not the best at selling interesting uh, 71 overall though not bad i'll take that moving on we head back to the ring for some tag team action Britt baker and hikaru shida are facing emi sakura and Yuka Sakazaki in a decent match. So decent wrestling without little, with with not much heat. Got there in the end. Uh, Britt Baker and Hikaru Shida defeat Emi Sakura and Yuki Sakazaki in just over eight minutes when Britt Baker pins Sakazaki. Emi Sakura was the weak link, no surprise. I'm just trying out tag teams again. Um, looking at 38. Oh. Yuka again, fluctuating between the low 50s, high 60s, you know, Make your mind up. And then Britt Baker performing worse than Yukura, to be fair. And Hikaru, again, leading the line because Hikaru Shida is a beast of a performer, let's be honest. Uh, but yeah, Britt and Hikaru getting a nice win under their belts for their match on Sunday with Jamie Hayter against the Outcast. That should be a very interesting affair. Let's move on to a backstage segment where Adam Page, obviously winning tonight, um, checks on Ricky Starks, his temporary elite team member. Um, and they kind of just have a slightly confusing chat and just say like, are we elite? Are you an elite? Are you are you officially a member of the elite? And Ricky's like, I don't know, man. Um, they don't really give you a chance to confirm. And Paige is like, I've, I've been elite. Um, I don't know if I want to be elite again. Uh, yeah, and they, they both just seem a little bit confused. But at the end of the day, they're like, hey, we have a title match on Sunday. It's an opportunity to win a belt. We're not going to turn that down, are we? And Ricky Starks is like, no, we're not. And Paige is, then kind of just like helps him up, you know, takes him to uh, medical just to get checked out. Um, and yeah, an 81 segment. Um, I think we should let Adam Page talk more. That boy has got a slightly golden touch with the microphone. Um yeah, so it seems like even Adam Page and Ricky Starks aren't 100% sure if they're elite. So I think the unofficial name of the temporary elite for this trio kind of makes sense. Because it could be temporary, but then again, it might not. <laughs> Moving on, we have got some tag team action. So the former world tag team champions, the Guns, face off against Lee Moriarty and Big Bill of The Firm. And a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. Uh, the Guns defeat Lee Moriarty and Big Bill um, in 11 minutes when Austin Gunn makes Big Bill tap. 
okay that's a very strange ending um i could have you know i would have put my money on lee moriarty eating that pin or making him tap but big bill he can't be happy about that i mean look at him he doesn't look very happy uh 54 rated match though uh everyone floating around the 40s lee moriarty getting the best which is nice to see and stokely hathaway once again being a great manager at ringside doing his thing um let's continue with our show and we have got a backstage 99 oh rated segment with uh chris freaking jericho um basically he has gathered the members of jas they're all looking a little bit apprehensive except daniel garcia rampage garcia he's loving life um and he's just saying so i've done you guys a favor you can all relax nothing bad's gonna happen um each and every one of you have been entered into the casino battle royale i've spoken to tony he said all of you are in um so make me proud and hopefully you never know we might have a future world champion among us and they're all kind of like a little bit like oh okay nice uh well, thanks chris you know they're all kind of licking his ass a little bit uh sammy's you know licking his lips rubbing his hands together you know squeezing tay conti's bum tay mellow's bum oh I don't want to get torn off by the WWE. And, uh, you know, Hager is kind of like licking his lips because, you know, he's got so much saliva because of his lisp. Uh, Daniel Garcia is kind of very chilled and focused, you know, Rampage Garcia. Uh, yeah, so uh, it seems that we've got our first one, two, three, four, five members of the Casino Battle Royale for Friday. Are one of these men going to end up our winner and have a future world title opportunity? Your guess is as good as mine. Well, it's not because I booked the show, but you know what I mean. Uh, 99 rated though, Chris Jericho pulling it out of the bag and then some. And I believe this now takes us to our main event of the evening. Kenny Omega versus Malachi Black. Let's go. 77. And in a good match, good, uh, Kenny Omega defeats Malachi Black in 22 minutes and 27 seconds with the one winged angel could this be what we see on sunday at double or nothing uh kenny with a 78 and malachi black with a 63 no other comments to be made 77 pretty decent let's uh, end the show and see how we did an 80 rated show wow i believe that is our joint highest rating from our first show um probably because of good old y2j and good old mjf uh funny that they both have names that are three characters um but yeah pretty strong showing also also we'll give a little nod to hangman page we need to get him on the promos as well and a great main event kenny versus malachi i think that might be our second highest i think kenny versus bandido from like week one or two is our highest rated match still which is kind of mad um but yeah, pretty good showing. Um, now we move on to Rampage and and then we head to Collision, which is going to be our final show before Double or Nothing. I'll see you guys in a sec. And we are back. A couple things to look at before we dive into Collision. The first is, guess what? Another retirement. Taya Valkyrie has now announced that she will be retiring from active competition in three months. So I think that makes it six or seven now of retirees slash older people just leaving the company. Uh, Taya, we're not too fussed about. I wasn't planning on using her and I'm probably not going to use her. So yeah, uh, let's just delete that and we'll keep this for possible future team storylines things and the other thing that we need to do is check our rampage so here is our rampage not the best um probably shouldn't put jobbers against jobbers we've learned that lesson many times but if it happens on rampage it doesn't matter so we've got nyla rose crushing uh charlotte renegade with a 39 rating the acclaimed you know forgot about them for a while uh defeated soul cow uncensored so as we mentioned christopher daniels is just going to eat loss after loss until he's gone uh, Daniel Garcia, Rampage Garcia, defeating Ethan Page in a 52. Uh, Jungle Boy Jack Perry has claimed his spot in the Casino Battle Royale, so he will also feature. 
And then in our main event, the Von Eriks defeated the Blondes. There we go. Let's head to the locker room. Do we have any? Yes, we do. Backstage incidents. Oh, we got a few. Jay Lethal and Trench. This is a random combination. Oh, okay. Apparently, Trench is Jay Lethal's protege. Uh, so Jay Le Lethal is passing on psychology tips. Um, Daniel Bryan is passing on microphone tips. Uh, Emi Sakura is passing on psychology to Riho. And she's also passing on psychology to Yuka Sakazaki. Nice. Pretty wholesome backstage incidents. We love it when Sting doesn't bring someone up. Um, as we said earlier in Dynamite, we're at the Walter Pyramid. And yeah, let's just get straight into AEW Collision. And look who's back. It's Christopher Daniels to eat yet another pin. Uh, so in our first pre-show match... Um, had terrible wrestling, by the way. Anthony Agogo defeated Christopher Daniels. Yes, the uh, Olympic... Did he get a gold medal? I don't know. Gold medalist? The, the boxing guy. Anthony Agogo defeats Christopher Daniels in 7 minutes 50 with the governor's hammer. Uh, yeah. I don't really see me using Anthony Agogo that much, but I figured, why not? Let's have Christopher Daniels lose to him. Uh, 44 races segment. Not bad. QT Marshall is again someone else's manager. That, that the boy is everywhere. Um, Anthony Gogo got a 29 rating, so this might be the first and last time we see him. Um, moving on, in our next pre-show match, we have Riho and Sky Blue taking on Thunder Rosa and Zayda. And in a match that had subpar wrestling, but very little heat, uh, Riho and Sky Blue drew. What? <laughs> Okay, with Thunder Rosa and Zayda in 12 minutes following a double DQ. So we have a match that's got four faces in. I mean, probably the two faciest of faces people in Riho and Sky Blue. Um, they end up getting a double disqualification. Okay, uh, who was the... Um, who was the road agent? QT Marshall. QT fucking Marshall. Yeah, this is why you don't leave it to the road agents in pre-show matches, which is what I do quite a lot, to be fair. I kind of just let whoever wins win. But, um, yeah, not when QT's about. Uh, anyways, 53 rating, you know, not terrible. Uh, Riho was the best. Oh, no, Thunder Rosa and Riho were the best performers. The other two, a little bit behind. Uh, in the pre-show, uh, so this is a Twitter video exclusive, I guess, uh, Miro gets in Jake Roberts' face for some reason. Maybe he's just frustrated that he's not on tv that much jake roberts probably said something um, and obviously roberts is the manager of lance archer and lance archer gets in miro's face and says you know you treat him with respect miro claps back and uh turns out we're gonna have miro versus lance archer tonight in a singles match so 53 rate segment not bad jake roberts great on the mic as we know so we don't have to worry about that and then the final uh segment of our pre-show is Orange Cassidy will be defending his international title tonight against the TNT finalist Blake Christian and that will be our main event tonight uh, which means I can confirm that Orange Cassidy will not be defending his title at Double or Nothing uh, you know just so you know 64 rate segment not bad let's move on to the show and our opener is Lance Archer versus Miro and in a decent match Lance Archer defeats Miro in 10 minutes with the blackout. Archer gets a 59, Miro with a 62. Miro's momentum must be in the toilet right now. Like That man cannot catch a break. Uh, Jake Roberts obviously did some good work at ringside and it got the show off to a strong start in a 62 rated segment. Lovely. Moving on, we have a tag team match between the Lucha Brothers and the Von Eriks. So the Von Eriks impress in Rampage and then they get a match on the main card and then they lose and then they go back down to rampage it's kind of they're yo-yoing at the moment you know they get the easy wins but when it comes to the big matches they struggle a little bit but 60 rated not bad uh, ray phoenix pins ross von eric um let's look at the rating 77 for ray phoenix of course 70 for penta and ross and marshall not doing the best uh ray, ray phoenix was held back by the chaotic nature of the match what did i mark this match as again uh, I can't see. Hmm, don't know. Can't remember what I did. Wait, hold on. Nope. I pretended like I saw it then. Who knows? 
Uh, oh, well, you know, Christopher Daniels booked it, so maybe he wanted to go out with a bang. Uh, but they all got the extra thing. Got the crowd buzzing, though, so I'll take that. 60 rated, can't go wrong. Let's move on to another match, and this is Luchasaurus against Matt Hardy, and this is an incredibly one-sided match. Uh, Luchasaurus just destroys Matt Hardy um, in 10 minutes. So he, he toys around with him for a bit with the betrayal. Uh, Luchasaurus got a 51, Matt Hardy with a 44. Um... And that's not it for Matt Hardy's beatdown because Christian climbs into the ring and just joins in on the fun. Uh, so Christian Cage and Luchasaurus continue to beat down Matt Hardy. Christian grabs the mic, points at Taz, and just says, this is what your son Hook is going to be getting on Sunday. Uh, so a little preview for you. Then he just drops the mic and he hits his uh, finisher on Matt Hardy. Uh, 56 rated, not bad. Let's continue with the show. Um, and in effectively a squash match, um, Billy Starks is defeated by the beast that is Nyla Rose in a 53 rated match. Nyla seemed off her game, yet still got a 51, so high five to her. Um, and Jade Cargill is ringside, um, hyping up her muscle, uh, Nyla Rose. Um, and she gets into the ring, lifts the title, holds up Nyla Rose's arm. You know, they, they celebrate a little bit. Um, and Tony Khan comes out and just uh, comes out and says, I thought I'd let you know um, on the eve before your title defense uh, who the third or second opponent will be in your three-way match. Um, and it is none other than the returning Chris Statlander. And Chris Statlander comes out. We haven't seen her for a long time. She's been out injured and she's recently returned in the last week or so. Feeling good, feeling fresh and she gets a title shot right off the back against Jade Cargill and Athena, who is someone to definitely not write off. Uh, so yeah, 44 rate segment, not bad. Let's continue. And we head backstage now. Uh, Sting catches up with Darby Allen and just kind of says to him, look, you know, we've had some issues, but they've all stemmed from MJF. I've got your back if you'll let me. And Darby kind of, kind of nods, kind of doesn't. Um, and just like pats thing on the shoulder and walks off. So we don't know what that means. Um, will Sting be in Derby's corner this weekend? We'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, so yeah, questions are plenty, I guess. Seventy-one rate segment, not bad. Uh, moving on, we've got a uh, interview slash backstage promo where the three of them are talking directly to the camera, just hyping up their match against the Outcast this Sunday. Um, just saying, you know, they're sick of the outcasts and they're bullying and their, you know, apparent domination of the women's division. But there's no dominating here because Jamie Hayter, Hikaru Shida, Britt Baker, none of them have fallen to the outcasts and it's not about to start now. So it seems like they, they're all on the same page again, which is good to see because they're going to need to be if they're facing the outcasts. It's this Sunday. 64 rated segment. Hayter didn't do well without a script kind of inconsistent she is sometimes she's great sometimes she's not but thankfully Britt Baker did very well with her new catchphrase nice moving on we have a segment with Adam Cole just telling the Blackpool Combat Club that they don't need to worry um, we've got our reinforcements they're ready they're raring to go and we're going to defeat you guys at double or nothing so again just a little promo just shouting out the Blackpool Combat Club saying that they're going to beat them and we still do not know the mystery tag team partner so we're going to have to wait until Sunday to find out who they are and at this point Adam Cole they better be decent otherwise we're all going to be a little bit let down uh, 6 to 8 segment Adam Cole's stats in this game are just a little bit wank if I'm being honest um, 60 rated fine you know whatever um, and then we've just got a tiny little backstage segment before our main event where Blake Christian gives Cassidy little thumbs up backstage just before heading to the ring uh, which is a nod to what orange Cassidy did to him a few weeks ago so uh maybe mind games maybe they are friends who knows um apparently blake christian needed a script to put his fucking thumbs up um yeah okay uh 51 rated segment Cassidy did well with his improvisation which i guess was looking and walking away so well done guys um, and this takes us into our main event. Let's see how it goes. 60. Oh, this is going to be a pretty naff show, I'm going to be honest. Uh, in a decent match, though, 
Orange Cassidy defeats Blake Christian in 13 minutes 52 with the beach break. So Cassidy now makes defense number 18 of his AEW international title. Can anyone defeat Orange Cassidy while he's holding that belt? I don't know. I can see you guys shaking your head. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see what unfolds. Blake Christian, so close, but not close enough. Just like with the TNT tournament. Just like with his match against Adam Cole. It's becoming a bit of a trend, isn't it, Blake? Um, don't worry. You'll have your day, maybe. Um, but this match got the crowd buzzing um, with Orange Cassidy's hot new move. Um, yeah, 60 rated for Cassidy, 55 for Blake Christian. Cool. Let's finish the show, which I think is going to be a little bit disappointing. 63. Yeah. Um, if we got the 63 at the beginning of this save, that wouldn't have been the end of the world. But we've done so well recently that our popularity in 11 regions is higher than 63 now. So we've lost some popularity, which sucks. But we have increased popularity in other regions. So, you know, I'm sure we'll get that back soon. Hopefully with um, the pay-per-view that we've got coming up. Uh, but that is the end of this episode. Thank you very much, guys. Um, a lot has happened in the last few weeks. And we finally have our card for AEW Double or Nothing. Let's see if I can remember all the matches off the top of my head. So we have got the Casino Battle Royale. We have got the um, Trios World Tag Team Match. Uh, which is the Temporary Elite versus House of Black. We have got Christian Cage versus Hook. Winner uh, receives ownership of the FTW World Championship, and that's in a Falls Count Anywhere match. We have got Jamie Hayter, Britt Baker, and Hikaru Shida versus the Outcasts. We have also got FTR defending their World Tag Team titles against Butcher and the Blade. We've also got the TNT Championship. Um, so after Takeshita won the tournament, he has his match against Powerhouse Hobbs for that title. Um, we've also got Adam Cole and Roderick Strong, uh, plus two other mystery members versus Blackpool Combat Club. And Jade Cargill will be defending her TBS Championship against Chris Statlander and Athena. And who can forget the main event, MJF, Darby Allen, round two, ding, 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 here we go. If I've forgotten a match, you can slap me on the wrist, but I'm pretty sure that's all of them. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you're looking forward to AEW, Double or Nothing, because I know I am. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Yeah!